Uh, welcome back to our discussion uh, about the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum of a function of one variable. We had defined uh, the concept of absolute maximum and the absolute minimum. So, the point of absolute maximum is the point where the function takes the largest value in the domain of the function and the absolute minimum is the value of the function at a point um, where uh, the value of the function is the smallest uh, as compared to the value of the function at all other points in the domain of the function. That is why it is called the absolute maximum and absolute minimum. And we have said that to locate the possible points where the function can have absolute maximum or absolute minimum is same as that of local maximum and minimum because absolute maximum is also a point of local minimum. So, we collect together all the points possibly uh, where the function is not differentiable in the domain of the function and look at the points uh, in the interior points in the domain of the function where the derivative is equal to 0. This is the second set of points and the third set of points is the points which are the end points. For example, the domain could be a uh, interval and uh, closed interval or and the end points of that interval are possibly also the points where the maximum value of the function can occur. So, among these three set of points which are same as that of uh, for analyzing local maximum minima, one locates these points, compares the values of uh, the function at these points and see which one is the largest and which is the smallest. And of course, uh, the critical point uh, or the crucial point in this analysis is that the function should have absolute maximum and absolute minimum. And the only theorem that we have discussed and stated is what is called uh, the um, max min theorem for continuous functions on closed bounded intervals. So, that, that said that uh, given uh, a function on a closed bounded interval, um, if it is continuous, then it will always have a point of absolute maximum and a point of absolute minimum. So, uh, whenever we do problems uh, in our uh, discussions, one should ensure that the functions involved are all continuous functions. So, let us look at some examples. So, let us look at the example where the function is given by f of x is equal to minus x if x is between minus 1 and 0 and it is equal to 4 x minus 2 x square if x is strictly bigger than 0 and less than or equal to 2. So, the function is defined differently for the values minus 1 to 0 and it is defined differently for values bigger than 0 and less than or equal to 2. So, this function is defined that the domain of this function is the close bounded interval from minus 1 to 2. So, the function is defined in a close bounded interval minus 1 to 2. Uh, is it continuous? Let us analyze, um, look at the function in the interval minus 1 to 0, at all points it is minus x which we know is a continuous function. Also in this interval, uh, the open interval 0 and close at the point 2, it is defined by this quadratic function, so which we know from our illustrations discussions in continuous functions that this is a continuous function. So, the only point left is the point x is equal to 0. Is it continuous at that point? To find that, one uh, analyzes the left limit at the point 0 and the right limit at the point 0. The left limit at the point 0 will be found by taking a sequence x n converging to 0 from the left side. That will give you f of x n as minus x n uh, and x n goes to 0 implied the left limit exists and is equal to 0. Similarly, if you take the right, if you want to compute the right limit of the function at the point 0, we will take a sequence coming to 0 from the right side. That means, this is the value of the function. So, if we take a sequence x n converging to 0 from the right, then f of x n will be equal to 4 x n minus 2 x n square. As x n goes to 0, 4 x n will go to 0 and 2 x n square will also go to 0 because x n goes to 0. So, using the fact about limits, uh, limit theorems for sequences, we will see that the right limit of this function at the point 0 is also 0. So, this function is continuous in the closed bounded interval minus 1 to 2. So, this will have a absolute maximum and absolute minimum in that interval. So, that is ensured. 
Now the question is to find out what is the value which is absolute maximum and the absolute minimum and how do you find that. So, to do that let us uh, look at uh, uh, the uh, look at uh, the function uh, in the domain minus 1 to uh, 2 we first of all claim that f is not differentiable at x is equal to 0. So, how do you prove that? So, that it is not differentiable at x equal to 0. So, let us analyze that uh, by working out uh, the derivative from the left and the derivative from the right. So, let us look at I want to find out derivative at the point 0 from the left side. So, that is equal to limit f of I want to go to the limit. So, let us like 0 minus h minus f at 0 divided by h, h going to 0 and h bigger than 0. So, that will ensure f of 0 minus h. So, that means h is positive. So, you are on the left side of 0. So, what is this quantity? This is equal to limit h going to 0, h bigger than 0. So, what is f of 0 minus h? On the left side of 0, the function is f of x is equal to minus x. So, it is minus h minus f at 0 is 0 divided by uh, the value um, h. So, this and that is equal to limit h going to 0 and this when you divide this is equal to minus 1. So, this limit equal to minus 1. So, the left hand derivative of the function at the point 0 is equal to minus 1. Let us compute the right hand derivative of the function at this point. So, let us compute the right hand derivative. So, we want to compute f dash at 0 plus. So, that will be equal to limit h going to 0 of f of 0 plus h minus f at 0 divided by h, h positive. Again h is positive, but here I have written 0 plus h. So, that means you are on the right side of the point 0. So, let us put the value. So, that is limit h going to 0, h bigger than 0. What is the value on the right hand side? The function is defined as f of x is equal to 4 x minus 2 x square. So, this is 4 h minus 2 h square minus the value at 0 is 0 divided by h. So, that is equal to limit h going to 0 of 4 h square minus h. So, this h cancels with this h and 1 power cancels with this so, is 4 minus 2 h h going to 0, h bigger than 0 of course and this limit we know h is going to 0. So, that is equal to 4. So, the left hand derivative was equal to uh, the left hand derivative of the function was minus 1, the right hand derivative is equal to 4. So, f dash minus at 0 is equal to uh, minus 1 which is not equal to 4 which is equal to f dash the right hand derivative at 0. So, implies that the function is not differentiable uh, at the point x is equal to 0. So, that is how you analyze uh, the differentiability of a function of one variable if it is defined differently from the left and differently from the right. Uh, so, it is always good to work out these things. So, f is not differentiable at the point x is equal to 0. Now, at uh, all other interior points we have to find the derivative and put it equal to 0. So, we saw that this is left hand derivative is minus 1 and the right hand derivative is equal to plus 4. So, that is fine. So, now let us look at uh, the derivative. The function was uh, defined minus x in the interval minus 1 to 0. At 0 we now we are discarding because that is the point of non differentiability. So, in the open interval uh, minus 1 to 0 and the function is minus 1. So, uh, it is differentiable at the point minus 1 and the derivative is equal to uh, minus 1. And at the point in open interval 0 to uh, 2, the function was defined uh, as uh, let us go back and look 4 x minus 2 x square. So, in the open interval 0 to 2, the function is again differentiable and derivative is 4 minus uh, 4 x. So, let us uh, put these values that. Uh, so, the derivative function is minus 1 for minus 1 less than x less than 0 and it is equal to 4 times 1 minus x if x is between 0 and 2. So, to find out the points where um, the function can have a, a, a low maxima or minima, 
we have to put it equal to 0 and of course, derivative between minus 1 and 0 is minus 1. So, the function cannot have uh, uh, any point inside that interval. Only in this interval 4 into 1 minus x is equal to 0 that gives you the value namely x is equal to 1. So, the possible points where the function can have uh, local maxima uh, or minima and uh, absolute maxima or minima are whatever what we called as the critical points and these points are the end points. So, minus 1 and 2 are the end points. So, minus 1 and 2 are the end points. 0 is the point where the function is not differentiable right interior point and the function is not differentiable and the point where the function derivative exists interior points and derivative is equal to 0. So, these are the four, uh, four points where possibly uh, where uh, the function can have absolute maxima or minima and these will be out of these only because of the necessary condition for uh, maxima minima. So, what we do is find out the values of the function at these four points and compare them. So, let us find out the values f at minus 1 the minus 1 the value was minus uh, right at minus 1 the value is equal to minus x. So, the value is equal to 1 f at 0 is 0 f at 1 is 2 and f of 2 is equal to 0. So, these values are computed by looking at the uh, expression of the function which is given to us. So, let us go back and look at the function. So, function was this. So, at the point minus 1 the value is 1 at the point 2 we put x is equal to 2 in this. So, I compute 4 into 2 is 8, 2 into 2 4 is 8 that value is equal to 0. In between point was 0 and uh, uh, 1 at the point 1 the value is minus 1, um, at the point 1 the value is 4 minus 2 that is 2 at the point 0 the value is uh, 0. So, let us uh, com com uh, compare these values. So, we found out these points and the values at these points were f at minus 1 is 1, f at 0 is 0, f at 1 is 2 and f of 2 is 0. So, among these four possible values the largest value is 2. So, the function has absolute maxima which is equal to 2 and the point of absolute maximum is x is equal to 1. And the function has absolute minimum that is 0 and the points are 0 and 2. So, at 2 of the points the function has absolute minimum and maximum at the point 1. So, this is how one analyzes absolute maximum and absolute minimum of a function. So, once again the strategy is first of all given a function ascertain that it will have absolute maximum uh, and minimum or and or minimum by looking at the domain of the function and analyzing the continuity of the function. So, the theorem that a function defined on a closed bounded interval which is and the function being continuous will give absolute maxima or minima will ensure. And then we go through the process of as we do it for local maxima and local minimum. We look at the points could be end points, could be the interior point where the function is not differentiable or the points where the function interior points where the function is differentiable and derivative is equal to 0. So, let us look at an example of uh, finding absolute maxima minima uh, as a in a problem in uh, economics. Uh, so, consider a linear output model uh, given by uh, q uh, is equal to 100 minus p. So, there here p is uh, output or you can think of it as a demand. So, this means that when p is bigger than 100 this quantity will be negative. So, uh, this does not make sense at all. So, that means there is no product when the price exceeds 100 or more. So, let us uh, uh, assume that the cost for q is uh, 25 q. So, cost of producing q units is 25 times q. So, with this uh, let us find the total revenue. So, as we know total revenue is uh, the price into the quantity uh, produced. So, p into q. So, 100 uh, minus p multiplied by q. Uh, so, um, from here we have to find the price of p. So, p is uh, on the taken on that side. So, it is 100 minus q. So, uh, uh, so the p into q 
is equal to 100 minus uh, Q square. So, total revenue uh, will be uh, this is a typo here it should be 100 Q actually P into Q. So, P is equal to 100 minus Q. So, it is 100 Q minus Q square. So, the total profit uh, is given by uh, total revenue minus the total cost. So, P times Q minus uh, C Q. So, that is the total revenue minus the total cost. So, that is P is equal to as before 100 minus Q minus Q square and C Q is 25 Q. So, that gives us 100 Q minus 25 Q that gives 75 Q minus Q square. So, that is the total profit function and to find out the possible points where it can have maxima or minima. First of all we find uh, this is defined for all values of Q bigger than or equal to 0. So, let us analyze uh, what is uh, it is a differentiable function. So, what is the derivative? So, uh, the one would like to maximize. So, let us find out the derivative. So, the derivative is equal to 100 minus 2 Q. So, uh, from here or it is 75 minus uh, 2 Q. So, that gives us the value of Q equal to 37.5. So, at the uh, when the number of uh, when the Q uh, the output is 37.5 the, the profit uh, will be either maximum or uh, the minimum I, we do not know one has to analyze uh, what will be the uh, nature of uh, either apply the first derivative test or the second derivative test. One can apply here the first derivative test if you like. So, it is uh, 75 minus 2 q. So, second derivative is equal to minus 2. So, the function will have a, a maximum uh, at the point q equal to 37.5. Now, the question comes um, is it uh, uh, absolute maximum or not? Of course, the function is continuous, uh, but we do not know the domain is not a closed bounded interval. So, um, what we know is surely there is only one critical point. So, uh, we can uh, close the domain of the function after any point uh, q 37.5. So, we can imagine our function because we know that uh, there is only one critical point. So, there is only one possible value where the function can have a local maxima or minima or absolute. So, we can imagine uh, the function mathematically to be defined in the closed bounded interval say 0 to say 40 if you like and then say it is in the closed bounded interval 0 to 40. So, it must have the absolute maximum or minimum in that portion. And since the second derivative at this point second derivative everywhere is minus 2 uh, minus 2. So, this q equal to 37.5 is a point of maximum value and is the only maximum value the function can have. So, the end points are 0 uh, and uh, if you look at uh, one can think of saying at that at the point uh, 40 uh, right q is equal to 40 what is the probably that is is that the value to be considered for absolute maximum or not. So, one can look at uh, the nature of the derivative see on the left of the derivative on the left side of this the function is uh, derivative is uh, uh, positive. So, it will be increasing on the right side it will be decreasing. So, after 37.5 the function is going to decrease. So, no value bigger than 37.5 is going to occur. So, uh, we conclude from all this discussion that the second uh, the function has absolute maximum local maximum and has actually absolute maximum at the point 37.5. So, uh, what is the uh, uh, profit uh, price uh, maximizing price for the company? So, that we put in the P is equal to 100 minus Q. So, Q is equal to 37.5 that gives you P equal to 62.5 as the uh, maximizing profit right. So, and the maximizing so and the maximizing profit uh, is the price at which maximum price uh, the me price at which maximum profit can be made is this and the maximum profit will be putting that value q 0 in pi q the profit function and that gives you this value. So, this is the, uh, the graphical representation of uh, all the information that we have done till now. So, look at uh, this uh, blue function that is the profit function 75 q minus q square. 
this red line is the cost function C is equal to 25 Q that is a linear function so graph is a straight line. Uh, the profit function is quadratic so as the graph is going to be like a parabola and Q, the coefficient of Q square being negative it is going to be parabola like this and similarly the total revenue is again a uh, quadratic with the negative sign of Q square so it is again going to be a parabola. Right. So, this is uh, and if you look at the maximum uh, the uh, quantity Q output where the maximum value occurs the maximum profit is at this point and my maximum revenue of course will be at this point. And now here is a observation that we should uh, keep in uh, look at on the in this side of the graph this is the price demand function. So, there is a blue one this is the price demand function and this is the marginal of the revenue green one is the marginal of the uh, revenue. And uh, uh, this uh, marginal cost is this red line that is a marginal cost. So, that marginal cost meets uh, the marginal revenue at this point B. So, that means, the, uh, this is the point where the marginal uh, uh, cost will be equal to the marginal of the revenue and that actually is happening because that is the point 37.5. So, why can, one can also uh, see it uh, in the scenario of the graph. See, this is the cost, this is the cost function. So, uh, if we want to say that the revenue um, at the point where the, there is a uh, maximum, uh, the uh, marginal is equal to the slope of the marginal is equal to slope of uh, this line, the total cost that means the tangent at this point will be parallel to the uh, um, line marginal cost because that is linear. So, that is also indicated here. So, this is how one can interpret uh, graphically the data. So, uh, we are verifying in this example that uh, the marginal cost right marginal of the cost at the point of maximum output is same as the marginal of the revenue at that point. So, that is graphically illustration and we had already checked it by uh, mathematical formulation of that. So, this is what we can check on the graph that the marginal of the revenue is same as the uh, marginal of the cost. So, um, today what we have done in this lecture is try to look at the absolute maximum and absolute minimum, how to find absolute maximum and absolute minimum and apply it to some of the examples uh, in economics. So, we will continue this study next time. Thank you.